Hi, this is Weekly Reflections, and I'm Nancy Joy. Uh, on my iPod, a while ago, maybe three or four years ago, I recorded Eckhart Tolle's New Earth, and didn't really get to, I, I listened to it on and off here and there, but not, not very seriously. And um, I was had a long drive, and something ran out that I was listening to, and it started right in on, on his book. And something really cool, you know, synchronistic happened in what he said that tied so many pieces of the puzzle. Basically, he wrote The New Earth, for those of you who don't know, because according to him, and I believe it's true, and I'll bet you do too, um, that uh, humanity's way of creating a new earth is through personal transformation. Not earth changes, not secret governments, <laughs> not Big Brother, but all those things push you into personal transformation. And so he has really good insights on personal transformation. And the one that drew me the most uh, and dovetailed to a quote that I just heard from Barbara Hanclough, which is part of this Reflections, um, he got into explaining the ego in a way that I had never heard it explained before, and I loved it. He says, the ego is a construct of the third dimension. It needs that reality to hook onto to give it validity or it would not exist. So, ego has a big agenda there. It's not just about how we get stuck in controlling it. It has to control you or it's the inner child. No, it really isn't that. It really needs to hook into something very, quote, real in the third dimension, despite the fact that we all know universally that we're all vibration and frequency. It's just how our minds put things together and believe them to be solid. And the ego's job is to keep us there in that place in the third dimension. And that just made so much sense to me. And then I read Barbara Hanklau's quote and she says, get off your suffering cross and take effective action in the world. And th this brought me to uh, where Eckhart uh, was explaining that oftentimes uh, our, our egos have us looping in these patterns where we're trying to process the lesson and what our souls wanted to learn and all that good stuff, which, which has validity. And yet what's really going on is the ego and the mind together, it's that part of the mind, ego is part of the mind, that works together to, to keep us here. And it, no better way than to get us stuck in a pattern, in an emotional field that we keep repeating. And where this becomes most focal for me is uh, clients and friends, one and the same to me, I know over an extended period of time that are, say, stuck in pain, stuck in poverty, keep repeating uh, broken relationships, on and on like that. And this is a big piece, and this is really exciting. Because what you're not consciously doing this. I'll give you an example. Most people are not consciously doing this. Um, I, I have a friend who's been in pain almost her entire life. She's in her 60s now. I've worked with her a lot on this pain emotionally, and, and she has gotten a lot better at times. And suddenly then she has this huge painful episode that can go put her in the hospital and have her breathing and screaming in pain and, and no one can figure out what's wrong. Well, listen to this. She was born into kind of a large Iowa farm family. And 10 months after she was born, her brother was born and he had some difficulties which required a lot of attention on the family's part, the mom's part. So at 10 months old, uh, she kind of lost that beacon. So her ego, already there in this dimension, uh, needed something to hang on to, needed something to give it validity. And she had a tractor accident. She was run over by a tractor accidentally and created a tremendous amount of pain in this little, what she one or two years old. And um, she got a tremendous amount of attention from that, of course. She's a little wounded one in a lot of pain. And who could blame her? But little did she know that now, in her 60s, years later, she's still repeating this pattern. Now, at first it was really hard to say to her, you might want to look at subconsciously, you keep creating this pain to get attention. Because boy, it does, her kids, her friends, everybody rally around her when she has these attacks. 
And, you know, she sat there because she, you know, who wants to go there? Who wants to think that in any way could be responsible for such a lifelong difficult thing? And yet, she's so expanded and transforming so quickly that she said, you know, I'm going to stay. I don't, I don't see it, but I'm going to stay open. And she worked with this, and we talked and had a few sessions on and off. And over a two-week period, she's she is really sure this is, is this is it. And her severe attack she'd been in is lessening daily, better and better and better. And now she said the nice thing is she can be consciously competent. She knows now that whatever it is a subconsciously in her ego causing this, she has the power to reprogram her mind. And, all, and start to feel better. Well, the same thing can work for a poverty loop. The same thing can work for a relationship loop. It's, it's a really good thing to understand that when the ego attaches itself to emotions, the person seems to be addicted to that and keeps recreating it, but has no awareness that that's what's going on because it's subconscious. So this is big for personal transformation. I have put below in my Heartlights email to those of you who don't get this on YouTube, um, two links to other reflections I've done that go perfectly with this one. One is called Ego Revisited, and the link is there. And uh, the, the other one, eesh, what's the other one called that I wanted to, uh, oh, Are You Stuck in Your Story? These are both great, and they dovetail right into this. So I invite you this week, if you know someone that you can clearly see stuck in this painful loop for whatever reason, let's go there. Let's take a look. Let's start to work with this. Because once you understand it, you can change it. If you don't know it's there, how can you change it? So this is exciting news this week. Um... I recommend that you reread his book. It's excellent right now, especially now because we're transforming and detoxifying very, very quickly. So enjoy the journey as best you can. And if you're suffering, own your suffering and realize it's a subconscious programming and step right on off your cross and create the new earth. Have a great week. Bye.